Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkian Biersma and today I have a video. It's kind of a request. The, um, we're going to talk about uh, Miltoniopsis and uh, what to do when they do get orange rot. So yeah, I have uh, at least two videos about how I take care of my Miltoniopsis. And at least one of the subscribers mentioned that I didn't talk about the orange rot. Which is true, and it should have, because it's very known uh, for the Miltoniopsis especially to uh, catch uh, orange rot. And it's something uh, you should deal with uh, as soon as possible. And uh, it's, for me it's been now at least over two years, probably three years, that I have a, uh, that I had an orchid, a Miltoniopsis with uh, uh, orange rot. But today I have one, I have a good example over here, it's this one, it's my Newton Falls. And I should have repotted it a bit earlier, but you can see it's starting to rot off these bulb, bulbs. And here you can see it's that orange brownish rot. And especially on this growth over there, I'm not sure if you can see it over here, but I will try to get it better in, uh, in, in view when we are at the up potting table. Or here you can see it starts to, the color starts to orange here of the bulb. And yes, I'm going to clean my hands afterwards, uh, after this, uh, this intro, because we're going to uh, take it out of the pot. And this is the Newton Falls, and you can see this lip should be more purple. If I have a, a picture of the bloom, I will put it in now so you can compare. So that's a sign that it's already is uh, not happy, the blooms are changing. Plus this new growth here is making a spike as well. It's just an orchid that is saying I'm about to, uh, to die. Let's try to uh, pollinate or, or at least uh, give the pollinators a uh, opportunity before I'm gone. So that's why it's shooting out spikes and it's really stressed. So I thought this is, uh, this is the opportunity to uh, make this video and to talk a bit about uh, orange rot and my approach. So uh, let's, uh, let's start working with this uh, poor orchids. <laughs> So welcome to the uh, up potting table um, because we're going to take it out in uh, out of the pot in a minute. This one needs a uh, repot anyhow because yeah it's not doing well. But I mentioned uh, the moss and I have my uh, second uh, camera on. This is the first time I'm going to use it, so this is a bit of a uh, test uh, for the, that for that new setup that I have going on here. I hope it uh, works well. Let me know in the comments if you like it. Um, Anyhow, before we go uh, uh, to work with Orchid, so it's good to know how you can recognize the orange rot, of course, because if an Orchid, uh, also a Miltoniopsis, for example, starts to uh, take up uh, the older bulbs, the older bulbs start to rot and shrivel. That's a natural habitat of the, uh, uh, natural behavior, I should say, not a habitat, a behavior of the plant. So it takes out the nutrients and it puts it in the new growth or it puts it in the roots or whatever. So it's basically taking up the storage there from the older bulbs. So they start to shrivel. They also start, in my opinion or, or, or in my um, um, experience, they can also show a little bit of orange and brown. But that is not uh, the orange rod we're talking about today. Um, but it may be a bit confusing, at least it was for me. So to recognize the orange rot is uh, probably the easiest to, uh, way to see if it's the uh, actual orange rot is when it spreads out fairly quickly and your plant is just uh, not doing well. Like I discussed in the, in the intro of this video, this one is starting to bloom and new growth is it's just barely there and already starts to bloom. It just try to, to uh, survive and uh, in this case, like I said, for the pollinators, just putting out blooms and hope that the genetics will spread like that. And then the plant is basically planning on dying afterwards. So we try to, uh, um, to, uh, to not let that happen. That's the plan. We do, we, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we will do updates. But I'm sure that we need to do something about this orange rot. So that's, um, that's um, a little bit my uh, experience with the uh, different types of rot. So there's just the usual one that doesn't spread as much, but then you have the orange rot and it's horrible. That's the first thing. 
So uh, the bulbs will start to get this liquid in them. It's very nasty and it can smell very terrible and they get smoothy and, and soft, the bulbs. If you start to squeeze them, uh, you feel that they are uh, getting soft. And that is a sign that you have the liquid in there. And you don't want to spread that liquid throughout the whole pot. So you need to take it out as we're going to do today and get off those uh, infected bulbs and try to get it out of your pot. So therefore we need scissors so we can cut the arcade and I also have the other bigger scissors cutters if I need to. And to sterilize them I use my uh, uh, isotol uh, alcohol. I have it 69% so it's very very high I'm sorry. And I have the green bubble which is my hydrogen peroxide. And I also wear gloves just in case. And I'm not sure if you're going to use the hydrogen, probably, but we will see. But we're definitely going to use the alcohol, like I said, to uh, sterilize my tools. And here I have my green uh, clipper. So that's very handy to cut rhizomes off. So this one goes over here as well. So yeah, you want to work as clean as possible, because if you get the liquid out of the bulbs into your pot, it's horrible. So we try to avoid that and uh, just take it out. And earlier I mentioned that this one needed a repot anyhow, and that's because of the moss. I have so much moss growing on here that I think it's also desiccating. And that could be uh, uh, the start of this orange rot. Orange rot happens mostly on uh, Miltoniopsis in my care, and especially if they are stressed. And as we probably know, Miltoniopsis is uh, stressed fairly easily. So yeah, that's why we see uh, the orange rot mostly in Miltoniopsis, in my opinion. But anyhow, here we have it. So we have some, uh, some roots, as you can see, from a net pot. That's why I was testing the net pots. And for repotting, they are not very easy. But anyhow, we need to take it out. And we have some color on this uh, yeah, obviously there's some color, but some lighter colors. So yeah, we have still some firm roots. That's good. That's good. But anyhow, it needs to come out. So uh, maybe uh, I'm going to break a few of them, probably. So let's see if I can get hold of it and I'm trying to pull it. So we go to my uh, camera that's up close here. So we can have a uh, vision of what's going on. And I have my water meter stuck here throughout the pot and going into the reservoir, it's over here. So I need to take this uh, cap off, otherwise it will not fit through the hole. Well, actually that may, I make an, if I pull it, oh, there it goes. I thought I need to take a cap off, but I can lift the pot. That's also something that we can do. So here we go. Yeah. There we go. That's the first thing of. Yeah, we have some roots over here. Let's take it out of the pot. I hope you can see it like this. And I have a wicking material. I hope it will uh, go back through the hole. Sometimes that may get stuck as well, in, like in this case. So I'm just gently pulling it. I'm also putting the roots through those tiny holes. I know it's horrible, but most of them are dead anyways. So that's why I was testing the net pots, but uh, for repotting, it's not, uh, not ideally. But it's uh, for another uh, video. Let's take it out. And these roots are dead anyways on here. So that's why. Whew. And smelly. So yeah, we have some uh, Velamen on here still left. That was uh, to be expected. Then we have our mixture, the pumice that I like, and some Cintiq. And I could do without this many Cintiq. I even have some Ceramas in there, so I just took it out of the pot and put it in this one. I wouldn't use as much Cintiq nowadays. And I'm slowly taking off the media and I'm watching, really watching where I'm holding the plant because like I said, I don't want this liquid in here. So I, may, I need to make some room and therefore I need to take off the moss. 
And here we go. Oh, you guys, this is smelly. This plant never did very well for me, but yeah. It's now clearly not happy at all. And I already know that I want to cut it in here firstly. So this part, I'm, I'm even know this new growth, as you can see, is there, but I think this will not make it. So maybe I can break it, just pull it in at the part. No, this one is very uh, soft, very dark already. So I'm going to take the clippers here and I'm going to see if I can cut that part off without breaking the bulbs like that. There we go. Let's put it here. I need to sterilize that in a minute. Yeah. This is still intact, this bulb. That was my goal, because I'm probably going to keep this part of the plant. And there we go. That is that part. Yeah. So let me give a close-up of this bulb. It looks green, but I hope you can see it. Yeah, there you can see it. You see, that's how it starts. If this spreads rapidly, orange rot, for sure. Or almost sure, almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. But you never can be too sure, <laughs> I know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it in here because this bulb seems to be clean. And then we have this bulb, we have this one with the flowers on, plus that one is carrying the new growth. So I'm going to put some alcohol on my uh, clippers here. There we go. Quite a bit. Let it evaporate a little bit. That's how it sterilizes. Oi, yeah, <laughs> alcohol. Maybe I'm going to be a little bit tipsy in, <laughs> in this video. It's so strong. But anyhow, now I know that I have the alcohol is still in there. So I'm going to cut hopefully in a clean part of the plant. And if you can, just keep it upside down so the bulbs will fall down, the infected bulbs. If they start leaking, you will have them on your tray, like that. But these are still intact, so I'm going to put them over here as well. Let's have a look at the rhizome. That seems to be fairly clean, so we don't have a purple ring. That would be an indication of Fusarium. So I'm going to take off the sheets here and have a look at this bulb. Is it still clean or not? But you can see we have barely any roots left. And that was to be too expected because this one is just so unhappy. So I'm going to take off these old sheets, clean it up as good as I can. We have a lot of roots here actually around the bulbs. Hopefully we will get some that will uh, shoot out again and will grow inside of the new pots. The clean media and I will take off these sheets as well but I will first clean up my tray because I will make extra wounds over here so before I do that just in case I'm going to grab now my hydrogen peroxide that is something I'm going to use for the wound and for the rot around it if it's there to hopefully stop spreading it The hydrogen peroxide is very helpful in that case. So there we go. Let's grab an extra container if I have it. Yes, I have it over here. This blue one, that's a clean one. I'm going to lay the orchid in here so the hydrogen can do its work while we have a look at the other piece. Let's clean this quickly up a little bit. Spray some alcohol on it again for you never know if I need to use it. We're going to have a look at the, the other part of the plant. You can now see how discolored these are. And this one is very bad. It's the oldest one. But yeah. As you can see, this new growth is looking so bad. And it's already, th those greener leaves are also starting to uh, discolorate. So I'm going to throw this part away. It's too infected, sadly. And we have this part, same story. That is uh, the part that is already infected as well. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to use alcohol, I'm going to clean everything up and then we're going to repot the uh, still healthy part, we hope, and uh, we shall see. But first I need to clean up. So I'll be uh, right back. So I am back, you guys. I just cleaned everything up once again with a lot of alcohol. So um, no, I'm not going to get tipsy, of course, but uh, yeah, it's a lot and it's uh, very... Uh, noticeable fragrant wise <clears throat> of uh, the smell but anyhow um so i now have a uh, new pumice here fresh pumice so the bigger pumice here as you can see for the bottom layer and i will put a rest up with the smaller pumice because uh miltonia do have smaller roots so therefore i like to use a smaller uh, pumice where is my orchid here she is and I have this uh, pot here that I'm going to reuse and this one has slits to the side so we have some extra air in there not as much as in that pot but very uh, fairly enough I think yeah uh, yeah it should be enough and a outer pot of course and of course a, a water meter so let's start and let's see what we can do like I said I'm first going to uh, open up the sheets a little bit now i have everything cleaned i can take them off a bit better without the chance of spreading the uh, orange rod in there so i'm going to open them up i hope you can see that just splitting them like this and then tearing them apart so this new growth will get room to shoot out the roots which we want, which we need in this case. I'm going to cut off the leaves here, like this, and then this one. And we have a few more, and we have some roots there that I don't want to cut off. There we go, and yeah, this is enough. So it's fairly high. Let's see if we can take a few bits off, extra bits. Yeah, there we go. It's a bit easier if you cut them. But you can see it's a very, uh, very climber. So uh, yeah, we need to work with that as well. Just checking this bulb. Yeah, this should be good. And this as well so uh, let's uh, repot this one start putting it up again and hope for the best well actually before I'm going to do that of course I'm going to take out of the spikes those will cost too much energy so sadly the blooms are beautiful even though they have a bit different color than they should have on this one here we go I'm going to take off the spikes I don't want any en more energy in those spikes but I want all the energy, if we can, in this new growth and new roots. So let's uh, start putting it up again. So I take this pot and uh, my water meter. It's putting it there. And then I'm going to firstly put a layer in of the bigger pumice. So that it doesn't fall out of the holes or through the holes. Gets out and then we start with the smaller pumice in a second because firstly i want to see what the best position is to put this orchid in i want to put it there or just behind the water meter i can use it as a stake later on the water meter just uh, like this yeah, i'm sorry my hands are a little bit in the way but because i have it there already the water meter I'm going to use it as a stake later on so I'm going to hold my arc to the back of the pot so it has a lot of room to grow over here that's the plan and yeah I'm just sort of hoping that it will not shoot another gro growth out over here it could be but I think it doesn't have that much energy it probably will stick with this one and then I can put in those roots a little bit more downwards just pushing those roots into the pot you never know if they start to shoot out again and now i'm going to fill up 
the rest of the pot with the small pumice. So here we go. Yeah, the small pumice is always a little bit dusty, as you can probably see, but I'm kind of used to it now. <laughs> Not trying to inhale it, of course. So you might hear me blow a little bit, <laughs> like that, to keep the dust away. And it is wash it, of course, the uh, small pumice, but it doesn't work. It, it keeps on uh, getting uh, being a bit dusty because it's so small and there's always little bits that uh, are breaking off and creates dust and that's okay. But it's not as bad as ceramas. If you ever work with ceramas, you probably know what I'm talking about. Horrible. There's the dust on there. So, uh, it looks like we have enough pumice in there. But I'm going to move it to the side a little bit because I don't want to bury that bulb too much. Because a very wet environment, which we sort of have with semi hydro, is also an environment that loves, that the orange rod loves. So I'm pulling it up a little bit and I try to uh, get some room around this back bulb here. So it's just above the media, just slowly lifting it. We don't have much roots to work with. Pushing it down here in the back. Try to show it on camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So you can hopefully see that I can, how low my finger gets in. So there is no pumice. The pumice is over here, it's way, way higher because of needs to be close to that new growth. And in the back it's lower and I'm going to Fill that up with pebbles. Sm my smaller pebbles, let's uh, grab them and explain why. Sorry for the noise. So I'm going to uh, put pebbles in. And yes, I'm using pebbles because pebbles are not wicking. So thereby we will keep those bulbs drier. It will not get as moist as the rest of the pumice, because the, the pumice obviously is wicking, but the pebbles are not. And that's what we want. You, you need to find, if you grow them in uh, a semi-hydro setup, which I would definitely would recommend if you uh, like to grow uh, Miltoniops, because I, I think they love it. But you need a nice balance. So you need the, the bulbs above the pebbles. So we can have um, a van running, fresh air, and it will keep the bulbs dry enough just to keep that uh, orange rot out of your pots. It works wonders. It works absolutely wonders. But you need to find a nice balance. And I hope I could explain that and show it to you guys in this uh, video as well as I could. But of course, if you have still have questions, please let them uh, leave them in the comment section. I hope you can see it now. You see that? And follow that line if we turn it around and then it starts to become more pumice and just a little bit of uh, pebbles. So that's the different difference. Once again, these are not wicking the pebbles, so it will stay dry around that bulb. And that's what we want. We don't want this to get any more orange rot. Yeah, besides it doesn't have that much roots, it is a nice um, arca to start with basically we have and I'm referring to we have two bulbs here we have leaves those leaves are looking pretty fine these are a little bit spotted here we have some spots on there but these are looking better and we have two bulbs and we have a new growth so that should normally be enough to get this one started but it will depend of course on how the orange rot uh, if, if it if it uh, is out of course or if it's still in there and that's that's a bit a bit of the point here in this case and yeah the orchid is is in growing mode but it also was in uh, like we discussed earlier in a sort of uh, giving up mode so we i hope i could uh, encourage it to uh, grow on and not die so uh we shall see i will uh, flush it now 
with just our own water and some seaweed like I always do with a uh, new orchid and also with orchids that basically have no roots. Putting fertilizer in this pot serves no purpose. There are no roots yet. We first need this one to grow. So a little bit of extra while we have some roots here still, but just a few. So I don't want to bother this, stress this even more with all that fertilizer in the pot. We don't gonna do that. So I'm going to put it in this pot and it will go uh, flushed and then put it back on the shelf. And I will meet you guys there again. So, well, actually I thought, you know what? We are uh, already here in the kitchen. Let's uh, do the flushing part as well. So we, ha I have a complete uh, video, I hope. <laughs> so um, what I, uh, like I, uh, I mentioned in, uh, in uh, just earlier on is that I like to use a bit of uh, alga mic, some seaweed extract, just a little bit. It's a very good uh, hormoning, uh, natural hormones to get uh, the orchid uh, uh, to grow some extra roots. It works really well in my opinion. So I use some RO water that has a reading of uh, 10 parts per million and just a little bit of seaweed in there. Just to give you an idea, I started 10 and now I'm at 20, as you hopefully can see without the glare. So just only 10 parts uh, per million of uh, the alga mic, the seaweed. I like the, the alga mic from Biobiz. And that is what I use, just a little bit to hopefully encourage this archa to uh, start growing the roots, getting happy again. So that's, uh, that's the plan. And I'm just flushing a, a, a little bit, like I said, slowly but surely putting in some water so the dust get out and also we have the first hormones in there just like this and that should be enough and then I will put it in her outer pot so it stays damp and moist that's what we want even though we're working with uh, orange rust a miltoniopsis still likes it uh, fairly damp inside of the pot so it will not let it dry up completely and I will fill up the reservoir uh, as soon as I see a root growth again even though this one is adapted to semi-hydroponic like I said I don't want to overdo it and I will uh, let those uh, uh, wounds rest a little bit so that is that and now we go back to the shelf yeah, we are back at the uh, big, basically at the beginning of the video, back at the shelves of my uh, Miltonia corner. Before I forget again, what I uh, didn't mention is, if you want to seal the wound, the cutting wound that we just, just made, uh, you can use cinnamon. So what I did in this case is use a lot of hydrogen peroxide on it, and I saw it fizzing and doing its job. Uh, it would have been nice to put on a little layer of uh, cinnamon or dragon's blood. I didn't do it, I just uh, forgot. I, it should be fine because, I, uh, like I said, I did use the hydrogen peroxide, uh, luckily. But yeah, it, to be even uh, shorter, uh, basically uh, safer, you can, uh, I would highly suggest to put on some cinnamon. But we will see, we definitely will do updates on this one. And uh, yeah, it looks already uh, way better, of course. Let's hope this one makes it. Let's hope it. Um, this is the tag. I also did include the date. 23 in September. So uh, we can follow this on. Let's put it over here. And uh, let's put this one back to the shelf. It's been through a lot of stress. Like I said, hopefully, hopefully we uh, did uh, get the orange rod out and it will start to get happy again we shall see but this is my approach to uh to uh orange rot if you have experience of your own or you would like to share uh, a treatment that worked for you please feel free to uh, add it in the comment section below because the more information that we can share the better for sure but like i said this is my approach and so far i've been uh, uh, fairly successful with this it now depends on the orchid, if it really is giving up or not. I think it will make it. I have a feeling it will make it because I saw some new roots, fresh roots that can shoot out uh, um, again, start growing again. I did manage to get them inside of the pot. Plus I, we have a, a nice surface just underneath a new growth. So for uh, more roots to come from that new growth, they are basically directly going into the media, which is perfect, which is is what we want of course and also uh, we have two adult bulbs with leaves on 
with a nice green color so should be fine but who knows who knows updates are definitely to come for this one for now thank you so much for watching and uh, as usual if you have questions or anything please drop them in the comment section below i will get to them as soon as possible for now thank you so much for watching and i really hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye